This video is brought to you by Squarespace. A year and some change ago, I reviewed the Lely Bianca V3, and at the time when it first landed, I was pretty impressed with it. I mean, for example, I usually approach titling my reviews with a pretty even hand, but at the time, Near Perfect just felt like the right way to describe it. That is, considering its fit and finish, its accessories, its technology, its overall performance, and of course, its reasonable price tag, at least considering the other similar options out there. But as I often do with owned equipment, it's time to revisit the Bianca and address how it's aged and if it's still worthy of the praise I showered it with back in late 2022 and still deserves to be high up on your list when considering a prosumer espresso machine in 2024. So in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But before we get started, I should say that this isn't going to be an in-depth review of the machine like I did originally. I'm not gonna to get too deep into the performance and the features, but if you would like to see those things and are curious, I'll link the original review either up here or down below for those who want or need to get brought up to speed. But with all that out of the way, let's just dive into it. So one of the main and more obvious concerns that people have about investing into relatively expensive coffee equipment is of course how it will hold up over time. I mean, no one wants to spend a lot of money just to spend even more on maintenance and repairs, especially in its early life. And on that topic, I have good news. I will say that the Bianca has been a serious workhorse for well over a year. And if you're a regular viewer and wondering why you really haven't seen much of it on my channel, it isn't because I don't like it. Quite the contrary, in fact. I liked it so much, it made its semi-permanent home in my kitchen. And during that time, there hasn't even been as much as a stutter or falter from steam to espresso. The original group gasket is still pliable and seals without having to use a lot of muscle. The rotary pump has continued to produce stable, quiet, and reliable pressure. The flow paddle still operates as it did on day one, giving you all the shot control your little heart desires from pre-infusion to flow rate. Though, as I mentioned in the full review, the paddle control isn't nearly as point and shoot as you might expect, especially when compared to more popular but also more expensive options like the Lamarzoco GS3 MP and the Sanremo U. And the 1.5 liter steam boiler still produces powerful consistent pressure for my morning cap. And the twist knobs, which tend to wear gaskets faster than levers, are still working well. Of course, all that is on top of it having a handful of programming capabilities, like your basic pre-infusion, and my personal favorite, the low flow mode, which can engage both at the beginning of the shot for low pressure puck saturation, and at the end for a nice gentle ramp down, which is great for those who want a bit more of a hands-off brewing experience. Also, admittedly and shamefully, I will say that the kitchen machine doesn't get nearly as much pampering and care as the studio machines do, so there may have been some extended periods without back flushing or a good scrub. But the finishes and surfaces on the machine, even when faced with regular splatters and splashes, left for days or sometimes weeks at a time, still clean up nicely without any lingering stains to speak of. Even the wood pieces have maintained a smooth, soft surface and have not dried out or become warped with both direct and indirect contact with heat and moisture. And finally, as you may expect, when you use something over a long period of time, issues tend to show themselves and arise, whether it be with workflow or something else. But I'm happy to report that the Lely Bianca really didn't have any, at least for me. But I still stand by that the machine could definitely use some save slots for quick programming profiles to avoid having to go in and individually change and adjust each setting manually. But truly, that's just splitting hairs. Now, I think the other main factor when it comes to choosing a machine beyond its long-term continued peak performance is its value for money. And granted, a $3,000 espresso machine isn't within everyone's budget, but I don't hesitate to recommend the Lely Bianca to those weighing it against other machines in and around its price range. And I think the most recent and popular machine to compare it to is the La Marzocco Micra, which hits the market at nearly $1,000 more, but with similar basic stats in terms of pump type, boiler layout, reservoir size, and wattage, but tend to diverge when we start digging into features a little deeper. Insulated steam wand, a hot water spout, plumb in option, PID control, which in this case has an asterisk because it is app locked on the Micra, external pump access, flow control, and programmable shot options. Of course though, when the spec sheets are laid out like that essentially side by side, 
it doesn't really display or give you a good idea of how different they are in actual practice. For example, just the flow control alone will give you a massive amount of space to explore, as well as the consistency from the available programming when you want that. And honestly, I'd even argue that the features on the Bianca take on the nearly twice as expensive Linea Mini, at least when we're talking about home usage, which only recently added proper pre-infusion for those who plumb in, an external pressure adjustment screw, and a shot timer for some serious luxury. All jokes aside though, I would be curious to test out the new Mini as someone who used the old one for the better part of a decade, so if you're watching this LM, you know how to reach me. And lastly, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't have personal experiences here, only secondhand stories, so take it with a grain of salt. But from what I've read, Lelite's after sale repairs and service is a lot more difficult because in most cases, you have to pack it all up and ship it out to the retailer. Versus La Marzocco, who uses a lot of the same parts across their entire lineup and also has a wide network of technicians across the entire world that can work on your machine, which gives La Marzocco a pretty serious leg up in the long term. So if you're not the most technically inclined or don't really want to learn or have an interest in learning how to repair your own machine, the Bianca may not give you the same peace of mind because let's face it, a breakdown is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. In the end, of course, I should say that these have been my experiences and they're based on my personal wants and needs from the machine itself. But I can't say that there has been any moment of Bianca ownership thus far that produced even a hint of doubt in its quality and abilities. I mean, even when I compared it to the nearly $8,000 GS3 MP, I openly admitted that had I had it before buying the La Marzocco, I would have maybe reconsidered, and I think that's some seriously high praise. But that's also understanding that the main selling point feature, at least for me, is the flow control. And if that's what you want too, it's worth looking at, considering it's very likely to be one of, if not the best possible value for money in the mid-prosumer espresso space with similar features, with the ECM Synchronica and Profitech Drive hitting price points near it, but slightly above it. But if you're looking to keep things simpler and really don't foresee a need for flow control now or in the future, and would rather pay a bit more upfront for what I would consider a safer bet, the Micra may just be a better fit. But on that bombshell, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. So what are your thoughts on the Lely Bianca and its current market competition, and is there any ownership questions I didn't get to in this video? So drop your answers to that question and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you all next week, and don't forget to support this video's sponsor, Squarespace. They've made building a website easy, with a huge variety of beautiful functional templates, all of which can be customized using their drag and drop fluid engine editing, and have automatic compatibility with desktop and mobile browsers. And no matter the site you want, Squarespace has powerful tools to help. You can easily build a store to sell goods, a blog to share your passion, or paid content to build an audience. So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Prometheus to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Prometheus, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for early content access. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.